we're the next generation. We're going to be the next governors, the doctors, the lawyers. We need all the support we can get. And Breakthrough is giving that to us. I am the one who's at school getting all these good grades, but Breakthrough is just there to help me even more. During the summer, I'm taking these four classes that are focusing on literature, math, science, and they're all so helpful at the end of the day. You go back to school after summer, and you're like, I want this in Breakthrough. I am a step ahead of everyone. I am really excited to share that the Nonprofit Podcast Network will now be increasing the number of nonprofit stories we get to share. With the generous support from Cap Trust, fiduciary advice for endowments and foundations, you can find them in Sacramento, Roseville, and Folsom, Runyon Saltzman, Inc., RSE, Marketing, Advertising, and Public Relations, Creating Integrated Communications Committed to Improving Lives, and Western Health Advantage, a full-service health care plan for individuals, employer groups, and families, these businesses have made it possible for the Nonprofit Podcast Network to go from a once-a-month episode to once-a-week episode, allowing us to serve that many more nonprofit agencies in our community. Please give preference to these companies if you require their services, and if you don't, heck, write, call, or comment on their websites with a thank you. Oh, and be very sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode every Wednesday. Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast Network. Our purpose and passion is to highlight a nonprofit organization in each episode, giving that organization an opportunity to tell their story in their words to better inform and educate the respective communities they serve, as well as provide one more tool for them to share their message to constituents and donors. Hi. I'm Jeff Holden, Principal of Multipoint Content Strategies and Hear Me Now Studio. We provide this forum pro bono to help build stronger communities through shared voices and to both encourage and support the growth of local nonprofit organizations through podcasting. As a child and through her high school years, my guest today found herself living in four states and the Marshall Islands. She, firsthand, experienced the challenges of inconsistent curriculum and classroom teaching, having attended eight different schools between kindergarten and high school. Learning had become unnecessarily complicated. That, however, brought her to an appreciation for youth and education. Having spent 16 years as an executive in the financial industry and over 20 years involved serving youth with various nonprofit organizations in many roles, she recognized the value of education as the pivotal issue to changing lives and communities. She's the executive director of Breakthrough Sacramento, a legacy program helping our youth get much more out of their education through a most unique process we'll be discussing. She's an education evangelist with a deep commitment to the success of Sacramento youth and with a commitment and dedication to the delivery of educational equity. Joining me is Faith Galati, executive director of Breakthrough Sacramento, and she didn't come alone. We'll have more on that in just a minute. Faith, welcome to the program. Thank you, Jeff. I'm so excited to have you here. And I see that we have a second guest joining us today. Joanna, you are an eighth grader at the Language Academy of Sacramento, correct? Yes, I am. We're looking forward to the conversation. Faith, Breakthrough Sacramento may be one of the best kept secrets in Sacramento. I mean, there aren't many organizations with as rich a history over 30 years, now celebrating your 30th anniversary, that have been doing what you're doing somewhat quietly. Let's get started with an overview of what Breakthrough Sacramento is. Could you introduce us to the organization? Oh, I'm, I'm delighted to do so. I knew you, know, you would be. It, it's, yeah, of course. <laughs> I think that it is a wonderful opportunity to share things that do go well in the community. Nonprofits are all working very hard to fill gaps of need. And Breakthrough Sacramento is one of those that quietly plugs along, and does great things. Now, Breakthrough Sacramento came to our region in 1994, and we were hosted by a local private school called Sacramento Country Day School. Which many of us know as a wonderful school. Yeah, it's a lovely school. But I think the best thing I can do is take a step back and explain how Breakthrough began. In 1978, it was called Summer Bridge, and it was started by a group of trustees and administrators of school in San Francisco called San Francisco Day School. 
And they started this program because they wanted to be able to reach out more educational opportunities to the urban youth that couldn't afford to come to their private school. And Mm -hmm. they started Summer Bridge. The method that they used, and it's unique and it's incredibly valuable and effective, and it is using near peers, students who are Mm -hmm. a little older high school and college students who are trained to help teach and mentor the younger students. I always tell the students, your teachers are going to be infinitely cooler than me because they're going to be much younger, kind of like your favorite cousin. Right, Jojo? Were they? What do it's you think? It's the best having teachers in our age group because you get to relate to them and they understand you. Unlike the teachers we have at school, which are a lot older. And oh. sorry, guys, you're not old. I promise. Um, <laughs> That's quite all right. <laughs> it's yes, just the we best. We are Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best having them relate to you and you relate to them. Thank you, Jojo. Back to Summer Bridge, so San Francisco found great success in it and decided to establish a business model that could be expanded, and it did. It rapidly expanded, and at this point, there are 25 breakthrough sites nationwide. They changed their name in 2001 from Summer Bridge to Breakthrough Sacramento, or Breakthrough, we're Wherever the breakthrough market Sacramento. is, yes. Right. There are actually five breakthrough sites in California. We have Sacramento, Silicon Valley, two in San Francisco, and one in San Juan Capistrano. So of 25, 6, 7-ish, a fifth of them are in the state of California. Absolutely. And we're from here to New York. Our biggest sites are in Texas. That shouldn't surprise anybody. Uh -uh. And another very large site with, I think, close to 3,000 students is in Miami, Now, to be clear, we're not actually a school. We are a supplementary educational program, and our missions are the same from California to New York. We are a year-round free college preparatory program for under-resourced, underrepresented, and marginalized youth who would like to become the first in their families to earn a college degree. We are also, because it is a dual mission, we are also a pre-professional training program for future diverse educators. And that's important because we do have a real crisis and a shortage of teachers nationwide. Our commitment is to developing and giving opportunities to future diverse educators, more students being served and taught by teachers that look like them. Diversity is a conversation that we often have in every circle. And it is always, of course, in our circle as well. I mentioned earlier that we also all share the strategy of using these near peers, the high school and college students, as their teachers. And And can I ask, do the high school and college students also come through the program? Are they breakthrough students or not necessarily so? It is my preference to hire our breakthrough students first. So I typically have about 25% to 50% who are former younger breakthrough students. Which is great because then you can relate really well to them, right, Jojo? Yeah, because they've been in the program and they know what it's like to be a breakthrough student. Earlier today, Jojo and I were talking about her favorite class, and I won't I won't let you know. I'll let her tell you her favorite class. But her favorite teacher is a breakthrough student. Okay. And I, I love to hear that. Breakthrough has a beautiful culture of making education accessible for all learning styles. I was one of those kids didn't like to sit in her seat. I had a lot going on. Ants mm-hmm. in her pants and she's got to dance. Yeah. I was sure I was a nightmare for a lot of teachers. But my learning style was different. Mm-hmm. And many of us have children who don't do well with sitting down in the traditional classroom where you sit and you're taught and you're tested. For our students during the summer, it's much more of a relaxed environment and a very small classroom, eight to one teacher and student ratio. Wow. (laughs) Nice. Right. So I think to step back again, I'd like to share that the why of breakthrough. For the students that we serve, we're addressing what we would call an academic achievement gap. And, And I'll share with you in Sacramento County, for example, one in four youth lives in poverty. So 25% of our kids are impoverished. Mm -hmm. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, and they put this report out in 
2014, and it still holds true. When a child from poverty achieves a college degree, any college degree, there's only a 5% chance they're going to return to poverty as adults. Education is an antidote. It's, it's a solution. And yet, and sadly, in just Sacramento County, for example, only 21% of our what are referred to by the California Department of Education, referred to as economically disadvantaged, only 21% of them are meeting math standards where their more affluent peers are at about 50%. Not great. No. But it's certainly more than half as well. Additionally, for English language arts, we refer to it as ELA, Mm -hmm. only 31% of our under-resourced youth are meeting ELA standards, English language arts standards, whereas it's 61% for our more affluent peers. Now, they're not half as smart. So what's the difference? Well, we'll start with the schools. They're in California, we rank 50th in the nation, last I checked, for student-teacher ratios. Our classrooms are very large. Mm-hmm. JoJo goes to a chartered school. I think your classrooms are a little smaller, but can you think of your largest class, an idea of how many kids are in there? My PE class, it's 35 people. That's a so lot. So that'd that's, that's your largest? Yeah. And what would you say is your smallest? 23. Okay. Yeah. The average for California, again, the last time I checked was around 26 to 1. What that means is that when students come into class, there's a lot of time that the teacher has to use for classroom management and less time for learning. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's part of of what contributes to that gap. Now, I want to make sure that I make it very clear right now that I think our teachers are the real heroes out there. I was going to say the teachers, this is not a teacher issue. No, no, no. If you asked any one of those teachers, how would you like to have a classroom of 10 or 12 and how more effective do you think you would be? I suspect that we would have a lot of Mm -hmm. cheering and- Where can I sign up? Right. Get me there. Right. (laughs) Now, again, the teachers that I go out and I meet when I go and present to their classes are exceptional individuals with hearts of gold who are deeply committed to what they're teaching. Mm -hmm. And they have a very difficult situation to work in. I believe they're doing their very best. Yeah, totally agreed. But I'm not here to figure out the the whys. I'm here to tell you the hows. Well, with with some solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if one were to spend some time researching what can be done for those students at this point, there's quite a bit of research, in fact, more than ever post-COVID, that indicates that it is important that our students receive a supplementary supports. And that should be in the, f- the form of after-school programming, for example, additional tutoring, and summer school. Mm-hmm. Summer school sounds like a bad word, doesn't it? When you think of summer school, you think, oh, I have to waste my summer. When you think of break, you think, oh my God, I get to spend time with my friends and I get to do all this fun stuff. And I love that she looks at education with us differently. Yes. Now, the classroom, it's they're not tested and being graded. They are tested once at the beginning of the summer because we're looking for gaps in learning. And then we use that to help us focus on closing those gaps in math. I like to think about math. You know, when I go into a classroom to tell kids, hey, who wants to talk to me about this new opportunity breakthrough? And we do this When we're recruiting new students, we actually recruit the young students when they're in sixth grade because we want them to self-select and apply. So we go in there and I'll say... Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Which is grammar school. It's not even pre-high school. You're not into the secondary step to high school. Right. Sixth grade. So what does that student know in sixth grade? And I'm going to look to you, Jojo. Sixth grade, you're making this decision to go into breakthrough? So when Faith came to give us our presentation on Breakthrough, everyone loved it. You know, at first we were a little kid, so it was like, oh, you could use your phone. We have Wi-Fi. And we were like, oh, my God, we could use our phone. But I think what really made me apply was they talk about being first gen in college a lot. And for me, my mom never got the chance to go to college. So as soon as I heard the word college, I was like, I need to apply. I think it was the case for a lot of students, too. I liked how I could apply in sixth grade, you know, 
high schoolers may be like, oh, you know, I don't want to spend my whole summer doing four classes. But as a sixth grader, you're like, you know what? It sounds kind of fun. And then once you're in, you realize this is fun and I'm really enjoying this program. Go ahead, Faith, and continue. Oh, sure. So now we've got them at sixth grade. You've, you've sold. <laughs> I'm, I'm in there selling you are quite this the sales opportunity. Person. You're selling sixth graders on the concept. Of coming to work with me during the summer, summer for right. six weeks all day and then having two hours of homework every night. And you know what, Jeff? They sign up. Sounds like a blast to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, would have, I would have not been signing up in sixth grade, I don't believe. It takes it, it takes a really good program. And we teach them with stomps and raps and chants and cheers. It's not quiet, is it, Jojo? It's not. It's the best. I love being loud <laughs> with my friends, you know. Uh-huh. And in classrooms, their students are, their teachers are teaching interns. They get roughly 90 hours of training before they come into the classroom to teach. And they will teach math, science, literature, or writing. And each one of those teaching interns has a professional mentor teacher who is also reviewing their lesson plans, looking in on them and and give support. We're all about support. So the kids are taught with uncommon opportunities to make learning fun and they enjoy it. So when they get sent home that night with 30 minutes of homework per class, they do it. Can you believe it? They do it. And sometimes they don't. And that's okay too. We work we work through that. But the point is that they're taking responsibility for their education and they get to see why. Because at the end of the summer, they get tested and we're able to see how much they learned. This last summer, when we did our pre and post tests, for the first time ever, we saw a 24% improvement in their math scores. Wow. Well, that's big when you're looking at only, what did I say, 21% meeting mm-hmm. math standards. So to go back, there are a lot of things that we do, and we work with them year-round for six years. So we work with them the summer before sixth grade all the way until they're ready to graduate from high school. We're actually preparing to extend that into college. There are five things I like to say we do exceptionally well, and we do them well because we have the support of the Breakthrough National Collaborative. They provide us with the well-evaluated and tested curriculum that we use. Additionally, I have the access to all these other breakthrough sites where we can put our heads together to talk through what's working well and what's not. So we're constantly evolving without being encumbered with any sort of bureaucracy or questioning. We are able to take this open, common core curriculum. That open framework allows me to adapt it to the students in our area. What the kids in Sacramento need is not the same as what the kids need in New York. Miami, wherever else. Miami, Rhode Island, Louisiana. Well, and what I particularly like is a fifth of the organizations in the state of California, you have a peer group with similar situations, similar state challenges that you can share amongst yourselves. I mean, I would assume no other state has five chapters in that state. No. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's it does they don't yeah Texas has three okay we're getting close <laughs> yeah yeah I appreciate that <laughs> so we do these five things really well one is the summer we call it the breakthrough academic academy during mm-hmm. the summer and in addition to the classes they also have electives which are really fun Jojo what did you say was your favorite elective I did summer book which is basically like your book and your school. You know, our Carly, she takes pictures out on the campus when students are doing like fun things that you usually do at Breakthrough. And we get to pick photos from what she, she took and we like put them in. We used Canva, for example. Yep. It was just so You're fun. in eighth grade. You're playing with Canva. Yeah, no question. And it's just so fun uh, seeing all the funny pictures. And, you know, we did every Friday we have Olympics. My favorite one's Olympics, my club one. There was a lip singing (laughs) challenge and we did a Shakira song. I was Shakira. (laughs) And for Olympics, you just, I know there was a hula hoop challenge. So we just got to put all that. Three-legged race, Uh uh, buckets of water. Always water, isn't there? Yeah. You kind of never know when a water balloon's coming, do you? We just kept getting splashed. (laughs) (laughs) 
So for the summer, as I mentioned, we have that. They come to us by bus. We actually hire buses to bring the students in. And the Sacramento Country Day School, while they are no longer our host, we are an independent affiliate of the Breakthrough National Collaborative. We they're buses, your facility? They're there. Where, where you take everybody? Well, yes. They, they offer their campus at no charge to us. So Wonderful. we enjoy that campus every summer for six weeks. And so the students are bused there. They arrive around 8, 8.30. They have breakfast at 9, off to classes. They get a snack. They get a healthy lunch. Not always their favorite lunch, but healthy. And then more snacks, a lot of otter pops going on and popsicles and snow cones. They get on the bus around 4 to head home and start their homework. So they're with us most of their summer. What I appreciate about these young people is they're coming for themselves. And we keep, I'd say, about 98%. I rarely have a student that doesn't want to answer my stay. next question. I was going to say, how many stick through the program? They don't. They don't leave. That's an amazing number. Yeah. In fact, over the six years, we have about an 85% retention rate. Okay. So that's number one of your five. That's one of my five. Okay. The second is when they go back to and they are starting middle school, we keep the learning going. So we offer free tutoring. For some of the schools, we're there every week. At JoJo School, we actually come twice a week to give supplemental tutoring, homework help, and supplemental education. And their teachers, again, are college students who show up to help them with classwork. Or some of the students, they come for one-on-one tutoring at our Breakthrough Office, which is located in Oak Park. And then we also offer virtual tutoring to the students. So the second thing we offer is tutoring and supplemental education. The third thing we do... I think if you stop there, I'm already... I'm I'm sold. There's still three more pieces, so... Oh, yeah. Okay. And the parents are ever so appreciative yeah. of having the ability to call us and say, I noticed that my child is stressing or having difficulty with their grades or they're saying, I don't like a class or I don't like the teacher, which is a pretty good indicator that we need to step up and and see what the challenge is and help them. Mm -hmm. So we partner with the parents quite a bit. That's important. We also have the ability to to speak several languages. So we're able to speak and communicate with parents who aren't English speakers. So the third thing, experiential learning. We call it Super Saturdays. Jojo, tell me about your Super Saturday experiences. I've gone to one. It was in October. We were carving pumpkins. They gave us snacks. We got Takis. I remember that. It's just so fun. A bunch of people go. I know we were also picking flowers from the garden because it's a Sacramento Country Day School. The garden is beautiful. Me and my friends wouldn't stop picking strawberries all summer. Picking and or eating? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, they're allowed to go in there and they will at breaks, just sit, have their lunch, sit in the grass, do art, whatever they'd like. And my Super Saturday, I've gone, like I said before, I've gone to one and it was just so fun. All the teachers, they were leading you through what to do with your pumpkin. And I know me and this other girl, we picked flowers from the garden because we're also allowed to do that. And we put them in our pumpkins and it was just super cute. Oh, that was fun. Mm -hmm. You've also had some other experiential activities this, this year. The students get to go camping, hiking. They had ski lessons this year. We took, we had. And I would imagine for many of the students, this is their first time ever, in some cases, of being to the mountains. Oh, absolutely. In some cases, ever being on the water. <laughs> yes. The, the kayaking to Mollus Bay, that was fun. So they've gone kayaking, hiking, camping. We, you've done two of the camping trips Point Reyes and Lassen Park. So we were near volcanoes. Great parks, both of them. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of our students have never camped either. And the outdoor excursions are all sponsored for us by Sierra Club ICO. Okay. An opportunity that we are so appreciative of. But JoJo doesn't know this yet, but we're going to be switching to a ropes course at Sac State. Not tomorrow, but we're getting it set up. That one's really, really fun. So that's experiential is three. Number four? Three. Number four would be high school advising and college counseling. Uh, so when JoJo was talking about the pumpkins, yes. she actually came out to a seminar called High School Options, where we talked to the students and their parents about how to select the right high school, what's next. 
and they make their lists, decide, am I going to my, my neighborhood school or am I going to be applying to a private school? And they take a look at what the options are. Once we've discussed that with the kids, the parents stay with me and we talk more about preparing a culture of college at home. Mm-hmm. And the students get to go out and do some fun activities like cutting flowers and carving pumpkins. Also inclusive of opportunities for scholarship and all the the funding that might be necessary if they choose a private school. Yeah. So for that fourth item, I'm mentioning the high school advising and college counseling. Mm -hmm. They have seminars and goal setting every month starting ninth grade where they can pick and choose what seminars and activities they want to participate in. But our objective is to make sure they're very comfortable with colleges and universities. So we do field trips. JoJo's been on a couple of university trips now. You've been to Sac State and what was the other you went to? UC Davis. Yeah. That was a fun one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So then we also help them set goals for their grades. We offer them tutoring if they need it. And An interesting thing is now with the SAT and the ACT not being used Mm -hmm. and also affirmative action no longer being something that is under consideration, how do you make, and I'm sure lots of listeners wonder, how do you stand out on paper from school to school, the way they teach and what those grades look like is very different. Mm -hmm. Certainly a child going to a private school might have to work a lot harder than some other schools to earn the same grades. Well, the objective we have with students is to help them build an attractive college resume, and that includes making sure they're taking rigorous classes, not above their their ability, but Mm -hmm. For them to be pushing themselves. Challenged. Challenged. Yeah. So we like to see a few a- APs in there, as many as they're comfortable with. Right. But also we like to make sure they have dynamic, interesting, valuable extracurriculars. So for some of the students, they get into sports. For some of the students, it's dance or theater. Regardless, Breakthrough offers them opportunities as well. They can come and volunteer during the summers with the younger students They can help other teachers. But one of my favorites, which is another one of those fun things that we do and we do very well, is we offer social justice internships. Mm. Social justice internships offered by Breakthrough Sacramento are actually funded by the Sierra Health Foundation through the center. And with that, we actually currently we're on, we're just finishing up our second year of this social justice internship focused on Substance Abuse Awareness and Policy. Since the legalization of marijuana, there's a big impact on our young people. Jeff, you'd be surprised to know that school districts everywhere are having to invest in vape monitors for their restrooms. When we interview sixth grade... I'm not surprised. This Mm. is California. (laughs) So, unfortunately, I'm not surprised, but it it's just a shame that that's the case. Yeah. I have no opinion for or against when it comes to adults' use. That's, that's not a, any any consequence to me. But what we do recognize is that our students get a hold of it earlier. Mm-hmm. And they get a hold of and get can become very sick using vapes, mm-hmm. accidentally poisoning themselves with gummies. And, and it happens probably mm-hmm. more than, than you would think. And so that's all under the realm of the fourth yeah, that's under the fifth, actually. The oh, fourth that's, that's is the that fifth. high school is the okay. high school advising and college okay. counseling. Let me wrap up the high school advising and college counseling. We make sure they keep a nice, robust educational experience through high school, and then we help them select the right colleges. We assist them with financial aid. 100% of them will complete the FAFSA or DACA, and then we'll also introduce them to a whole slew of additional scholarships. Opportunities, right, that maybe they wouldn't have been able to discover on their own. Right. Yeah. Just last night, I was finishing up a scholarship recommendation for a student who is on her second year at USC. So we offer these critical tools that as a first gen to college, they wouldn't know how to navigate. In an average cycle of a year, how many students are in Breakthrough? I don't think we we actually asked that question. We'll be right back with more from Faith and Jojo right after these few short messages from our supporting companies. I was in the media business for over 35 years and had the great privilege of working with Runyon Saltzman, RSE, Marketing, Advertising, and Public Relations. 
We collaborated on many different campaigns, but their commitment to the nonprofit sector hasn't changed since their founder, Gene Runyon, started the agency. Over many years and many campaigns, Runyon Saltzman has been committed to improving lives by tackling California's most challenging issues. Guided by research-informed strategies and insightful, creative solutions, RSE develops innovative communications campaigns that raise awareness, educate, and reduce stigma in diverse communities throughout our state and beyond. To learn more about RSE, visit rs-e.com. I'm Kelly Brothers. At Cap Trust, we help individuals and families with wealth planning. We help big organizations with their corporate retirement plans. But we also do a lot of work with endowments and foundations, providing fiduciary advice for their investment management, their risk management, or working with donors. Give me a call or reach out via our website or ask one of our clients. Sacramento SPCA, Sacramento Food Bank, or the Greater Sacramento Economic Council. Cap Trust in Sacramento, Roseville, or Folsom. Find us at captrust.com or call 916-924-7527. I'm thrilled to have Western Health Advantage partnering with us as they do so much to support so many nonprofit agencies in our community. As a truly local health plan, you'll find individual and family options, employer options, plans for CalPERS and Medicare Advantage. From medical services to pharmacy, health and wellness support, as well as behavioral health care, Western Health Advantage has a plan that fits what you need. As an employer, for profit or nonprofit business, individual or family, you can find more at westernhealth.com. Now let's get back to the conversation with Faith Galati, Executive Director of Breakthrough Sacramento, and one of the students in the program, Joanna. Well, since, since 2017, when I came on, we've increased from about 120 to about 225. Every year? Each year, there's 225? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, we're at, we're seems... at about 50 per grade, and we're Got now, it. Okay. yeah, and we're now in a capacity building phase. Breakthrough is very scalable, and our limitations really are only funding, funding and, right. and, you know, that's the capacity. Yeah. We have some good funders and some good supporters, so we're we're now focused on increasing that each year by hopefully another 50 to 100. Well, and hopefully the exposure and the conversation, this is just the tip of an iceberg right. to make people more aware of what you know what the program is capable of doing right. and what it's historically shown to do. Right. Let's talk a little bit more about the teachers. Oh, you know, we we've got the students. I get you're going to classrooms and you're exciting and you're I'm going to use the word selling, but it's really more presentation and enthusiasm <laughs> for the students to choose to get involved. Yeah. How do your teachers get involved? How are they oriented to the program? So our teachers come from all over, from universities all over the U.S. My preference is always to hire teachers who have a footprint in Sacramento because once they get their credentials, I want them to come back here and teach. So they could come from anywhere to come to Sacramento Mm -hmm. for the program. Yes. And and they're paid. They are. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, they are. They are. In fact, the Breakthrough National Collaborative is the clearinghouse. The students from all over the nation apply through the clearinghouse, and we the students or the teachers. They are technically students because they're college students. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So there's a clarification that has to be made there. So now I'm talking about. I'll call them the teaching interns. They are. There you go. Perfect. Predominantly college students, and they apply through the Breakthrough National Collaborative's website. And they select which sites they're interested in, and though, then they get pushed on to us. Now, that application isn't easy. It's pretty robust, and it includes them having to videotape themselves practice teaching. Let's not kid ourselves. They've all been videotaping themselves <laughs> for years already. They're doing selfies and you know, <laughs> shorts on, on Instagram and TikTok and it's probably Facebook their favorite and part. YouTube, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, now, now, Jojo, have, have you got... A cell phone, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. And you have done, I'm sure, shorts and little videos and posts on on Instagram and TikToks. Okay. See, this is at eighth grade. So, yeah, they're experienced. They're highly, highly experienced, high production value students. You you make a really good point. Uh (laughs) They they do. And so they, they do submit these videos. We interview them for Sacramento. We... We don't provide housing. We want them all to have roots here. 
So okay. they, they do come from all over, but they usually either have a relative here or majority of them actually went to school and grew up in Sacramento. And that's that's what we love. Perfect. They are very diverse. They come from a lot of them from the same neighborhoods our students are coming from. So there's a relatability that is achieved through this process. Now, for them, most of them are thinking that they'd like to become educators one day, but not all of them. I have had students come through who got one right now that's an astrophysicist. Oh, jeez. They have a lot of interest, but they're great at teaching. I was going to say, what a great exposure to a student who is maybe strong in STEM. Mm -hmm. And they've got an astrophysicist to ask questions. What's Absolutely. this loud? What's this like? You know, do I want to go into this field? Right. So the, given these, these exposures to different career types, and for the teaching intern, they get to about 250 hours of speaking to young people and that overcoming that fear of public speaking, but learning how to prepare yourself, manage timing, and be aware of your audience. Boy, there is almost nothing more critical than a middle school student. No, oh, right, <laughs> right. So it's a good foundation. We really focus on quantitative mechanisms. We want to make sure that what we're doing is effective. So we pre- and post-survey our teaching interns to determine their satisfaction, but we also check with their mentor teachers to determine on a rubric that we have for measurement what skills they are attaining mm. and actually beginning to master. Currently, we find that year over year, about 90% say, you know, I do want to become an educator. And that's outstanding, especially given they've just put all these hours in the summer. But that 10%, I'm probably even more proud of that. 10% have said, no, nah, not for me. Right? And isn't this the right time to find out? Absolutely right. <laughs> As opposed to in the classroom or 10 years into the classroom when now they have an identity crisis of what do we do? Absolutely. You know, and what, what benefit am I providing to that student? Right. You know, over time. And because of the emphasis we have on STEM, and we thank SMUD for being, we are a sustainable partner. Wonderful and, community supporter. Aren't they? And our, our folks there have been so kind and generous with providing us with curriculum for things like solar. Jojo, do you remember doing the solar work? I got number one. Me and oh, my congratulations. best friend. Thanks. Tell them what you got number one doing. So we made solar power cars. They're like about this big. They're tiny, really. We got a solar panel, like the car was built in. We decorated it. We actually had to place the solar panel to make sure like where it would go, you know, where it got the most sunlight so they could just drive super fast. And we made little adjustments to these cars to make sure our car would go the fastest. And at the end, we had a race. And it won? Yeah, we won. Congratulations. Thank you. So the solar cars are a huge hit. And they have a lot of other solar-related activities. But, yeah, it's just one more thing that makes that exciting. Maybe we need the kids to help the manufacturers figure out how to get them Integrated into the society at large, right? <laughs> yeah. We only have a few years. That's true. Though they, the designs would be uncommon. What do you, Can you describe a couple of designs? Mine was called the Barbie car. We made it all pink, you know. I know another. There was a Mario car. It was so funny. Like they had an actual Mario figure on it. And I don't know. It was just, I think well, there was, was an Oppenheimer one because Oppenheimer had come out at the time. It was so fun. It was everyone. a great taco truck last year. It was a taco truck for Jesus, is what it was. <laughs> I think there was also a Scooby Doo one oh, this year. Scooby Doo one, yes. They get to and express this, themselves. Is, is there a grade level that participates in this, or is it from six to senior in high school? The summer programming is for our rising seventh, eighth, and ninth grade students. Okay. So it's for the first three summers. Got it. Once they're in high school, they're invited to come back during the summers. They love the summers, but they come back as volunteers. Okay. And that looks nice on their college resume, but also it's a way for them to give back, and it gives them something to do. And frankly, it's a good place for them to be, to be fed every day and to have some good additional activities. It's just a wonderful place and space to be. So tell me about the impact the impact of the program, the outcome of the program, the students who have gone through, who have gone obviously through high school, into college, through college, and how far and how long you follow them. 
Sure. So as I mentioned, this is the good news story. You know, it may be a program it's that the breakthrough. is- It's the breakthrough. It's the breakthrough. It's breakthrough. And the breakthroughs are true. For our students, they are tracked all six years. Our goal is to make sure that they complete the A through Gs, the courses that are requisite to apply to a California State University or University of California. And for our students, 100% of them will graduate from high school. That compares to about 78% of under-resourced youth in Sacramento County. Typically, we're right around... You said 100% 100%. graduate. Every single one of the breakthrough students graduate high school. Every single one. Which is, in some cases, in some families, that in itself is a significant accomplishment. It is very common for us to have students whose parents haven't made that accomplishment. Right. Correct. And then... All of them, the last two years, 100% received college offers. Amazing. Yes. It was particularly difficult for our students post-COVID and even during COVID. I have one story to share about during COVID. I had a young lady who had five siblings, and she was in a small apartment with her parents and the five siblings. Four of them were in school. And so the school said, all right, everybody's got to get on a computer and check into class. And she called me, said, Miss Faith, who goes to school today? Right. And ultimately the schools caught up and were able to give them more computers. But still, we have four kids trying to attend class in a big room. Oh, well, not to mention even we know what it's like when there's demand on the Wi-Fi or on the wireless. If you put too many on, yeah. It's it's choppy. It doesn't perform properly. And yeah. what was, a challenge. It was very common for our students to try to find other places to sit outside of buildings and just sit there and do their take their classes. But this one young lady, she was a she was a powerhouse. She figured out that her father, who was a taxi driver and couldn't drive during this period, she just went out and sat in his car for her entire senior year. She took all of her classes in the front seat of her father's taxi cab. And this is a breakthrough student? This was a breakthrough student, yeah. And she graduated and she got a full ride and she went to the university in Louisiana and to, in New Orleans. She got a full ride to university in New Orleans and she's doing wonderful. In fact, I just checked on her earlier this week. Proud, proud moments. These yeah. kids are resilient and they want it. Yes. Well, anybody that sits in a car for the senior class to go through their coursework that's determination and perseverance and, and absolute interest to get to the next level. Yeah. I think it, it shows that when given the opportunity, not only are they not half as smart, they're quite capable and willing to do what it takes. Our students are, well, two years ago, we had a student who went to Stanford. Imagine being first generation yeah, first, first out of high school, first to college, and the college you're going to is Stanford. Right. I had that same year a child got, get into UCLA, and the next year went into USC. And those aren't the only ones. There are, there are many, many universities up and down the state that they get into every year. I did have a young man who got into, well, he got into Yale, but couldn't afford mm -hmm. to attend. And we did our best to work with the school he was attending at the time to get him funding and ultimately decided that he would stay local and get his general ed courses. And then he'll transfer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to skin the cat. There's a lot of ways to figure out nothing wrong with starting the first couple of years at a community college, getting those general ed cats. Right, and establish yourself and then you can work Move from on. there. Right. Plus you have that intellectual equity of the campus and the ability to navigate a little bit differently right. and maybe find some scholarships, get a little bit more creative. Right. That's just an incredible number all the way through. You know, Jojo, what do you see from your peers, from the students that you're with in class? What's their perspective? What do you guys talk about when you talk about high school and next steps? High school is really scary. A lot of us at school, my school, um, they went to their home school. These aren't people in Breakthrough because they didn't know where else to go. Um, for example, my friends, she ended up going to Burbank. She she got accepted. And I was like, well, I need to make you apply to like a program inside. And so she applied to the Trading Academies program and she got in. But I think it's really sad how some of them just have to go to their home school because they don't know where else to go. I applied to only private Catholic schools. 
I've gone into two so far. Congratulations. Thank so you, you have a choice. Yeah. And I think breakthrough is really helpful there. Faith, for example, I I was super nervous. I didn't know whether I was going to get into St. Francis or Christian Brothers. So I asked her for a letter of recommendation. And then the next week, I get a box from St. Francis. Congratulations, you've been accepted. And I was like, oh my goodness, I did not think I'd get accepted into St. Francis. So just with the help of Breakthrough, it's amazing. And I feel bad for my peers who don't have the help of Breakthrough, which is why I try to help my friends who have to go to it's important that I tell you, Jojo, that you do this for yourself. We don't, you know, when we say we have a student going to Stanford, we didn't get him there. He did the work. Correct. We offer the tools and they pick them up, but we make those very attractive tools and we show them how to use them in the best possible ways. And it becomes exciting to learn and to accomplish wonderful things. Faith, all of this comes at a cost. Yes. And right. This is, <laughs> this is a tough question. How is the organization funded? Ah, it's a great question. About 25% is of our funding comes from individual donors. And, individual, not corporations. Right, no. Individuals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about 25% is individuals. And then the remainder are grants and foundations. We're very happy to have fine funders like I mentioned earlier, Sierra Health Foundation, The city of Sacramento in the past has been very helpful. We've got Golden One Credit Union, SMUD, as I mentioned, Kaiser Permanente, fantastic partner, probably one of my longest standing partners, Mm -hmm. and many, many others. The Kelly Foundation, Mm -hmm. Point West Rotary, a lot of fine groups who care about education and recognize a critical point, as I mentioned, that 5% issue that helping students avoid repeating what's happened in their neighborhoods and in their own homes, but instead break free and start to find ways to become independently. It helps students find a way to achieve the education so that they can be self-sufficient, have families, own a car, buy a home. When we think about where can we invest to make the most profound difference in our community, I submit that it's in education. Mm -hmm. Because when a young person has that education, they are less likely to be drug, alcohol, or tobacco abusers. They live longer. They have lower divorce rates. They have a lot more health. They are very much unlikely to ever become homeless. And when we're facing those critical issues in our community, we recognize that education up front can derail some of these terrible paths that people end Mm -hmm. up taking. Yeah, I think there's there's no doubt that education is the answer to breaking the cycle of poverty, period, end of story. And it starts at the earliest level that we can make it start. Mm-hmm. In, in some cases, we've worked with another program that was literacy for third graders, because we know if you don't read and write by the ta- time you get out of third grade, the likelihood of incarceration is significantly greater. Now you're picking students up at sixth grade into the high school to college realm which at that level, now we know there's an engagement. If you were to say there's a most significant need for the organization, what would your appeal be? You're talking to maybe a donor or philanthropic participant that is interested. What would you say? Because of our success over the past 30 years and the success that we see at the breakthrough sites nationwide, Our need is to scale. Our need is to be able to serve more students. To serve more students, I will need funding to Mm -hmm. hire more teaching interns. Right. So it it really will always boil down to funding. Now, I feel very proud to share that we're highly efficient with operational expenses of about 12%. We use a fiscal sponsor, community initiatives in Oakland that really helps us focus on the business and not be concerned about managing payroll and day-to-day detail, all that right. stuff. Right. And, and ultimately, we'll, we'll switch over to our own 501c3, but we remain a nonprofit and that, that benefit. Our need is like that of many other nonprofits, more general funds so that we can take care of adding those teachers and expanding our 
facilities. Right now, we're looking at funding to help us add a program called the Breakthrough Starter Pack. It's just a data package that has been customized on Salesforce to make it possible for us to do an even better job of tracking our students and where they're at educationally and our communications with their parents and what universities, for example, they're looking at. We're also looking at expanding the amount of space we use and continuing to forge new relationships with community partners. Who may not know you exist. Yes. Because so many of us are unaware. Right, right. It's important to match people's passions with, you know, the right activities. I have a, we have a mantra, several of them, but one of them is for my own family. It's, you know, live simple, give more. And if not me, then who? I recognize for myself, my passion is in education. But I, I run into plenty of people whose passion is animals or, you know, something that has to do with nature. I right. respect all of that. Let's focus on, let's match those people who believe in education with agencies that have great success. At Breakthrough, we're strong, strong believers in collaboration with other nonprofits mm -hmm. because we do believe that we are better together. I happen to be active with the Sacramento Literacy Foundation, which really focuses on right now the science of reading. And while our students come to us reading, before they get to us, they had to go through that struggle. So Rachel Javis is doing a great job in that area. I appreciate CalSOAP. They're a division at the Sac County Office of Ed. I'm on the I'm chair of the board for CalSOAP, and their team does an incredible job getting out to community members and showing students how they can afford to get into college. But more importantly, we've had some really exciting partnerships. For example, last year with Sac State, they actually wrote a class, a three-credit elective, and any of their students who came to work as teaching interns during the summer they got credit. earned credit. For the fall, it was a wonderful opportunity. They were very happy with it, and we're doing it again. Not only are we doing it again with them, UC Davis found out and said, hey, we want in too. And they have been sending us, well, last I counted, at least 10 teaching interns from UC Davis, who not only will be paid during the summer as teaching interns, but will also, in the fall, finish up their project with us and earn three credits. Those types of things really make a difference. And finally, we find that the number one reason students don't persist in college is finance. They may have scholarships, but they don't cover everything. Mm -hmm. So we have found a way. We made a relationship with the CAP Center for AmeriCorps positions. And this year we tested some of our breakthrough students who are in college working for us for 12 hours as oh, tutors. Wonderful. wonderful. And teachers during the summer, they're getting paid twice a month to do that, which really closes the gap for them in expenses. And by the time they finish 900 hours, they will also receive about a $3,600 educational award that goes to their tuition for the next year or more. Well, and that collaborative element of nonprofits sometimes is overlooked. Yes. And it's great to see that you actually are reaching out and have those, those connections. Right. Because I, they are so significant in support. It's something you may not have to pay for going forward. And vice versa, it's a an integrated piece to further the work that you do. Absolutely. I'm going to take that a step further because I get so excited about education because I know it is the root of all success. And you may be passionate about animals, but without a vet, you have a problem with your animal. And your vet comes from education. And without an environment for the animal to inhabit properly, whether it be in the wild or even at home, there's a scientist or the, there's a STEM student that is passionate about that particular piece. That comes from education. So without it, where are we? I've never heard it stated better. <laughs> it's really, really true. And I'll have to tell my sister, the veterinarian, that you said that. Right. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. So- before we close, I'm I'm going to, Jojo, if, even if you need a minute to think about it, it's okay. I'm going to ask you to speak to the people who might be interested in funding and supporting the program. 
you are an eighth grader, which to me is amazing. You've been incredibly articulate. You're comfortable in a room of adults with you know, lights and a camera and, and a microphone in your face. What would you say to the people who are saying, oh, you know, I don't know where I want to give this money. You know, I don't know why I might want to give this money to Breakthrough Sacramento. Could you say something to appeal to that person to say, here's why this is a good investment? Well, I think there's many reasons why people should donate to Breakthrough, you know, help us. But I think it's all going to a good cause at the end of the day. It's all about the students. We're the next generation. We're going to be the next governors, the doctors, the lawyers. We need all the support we can get. And Breakthrough is giving that to us. So if you really don't know where to put your money, give it to them. You know, you know, it's going to go to a good cause. We're... Keep going. No, don't no, stop. Okay. Keep going. You're good. You, you're you are doing a great job. Yeah. I think... I, I want to sc- scream this. I want to I want to hug you and say you're doing a fabulous job. You keep, are. Keep going. Tell us a little um, bit more about why we need to support you. Breakthrough is the best. And, you know, without the support that they're giving, we wouldn't be here. Even though Faith gave that recommendation to St. Francis and Christian Brothers, which I'm sure she did for other students, too. I am the one who's at school, you know, getting all these good grades. But Breakthrough is just there to help me even more. During the summer, I'm taking these four classes that are focusing on literature, math, science, and they're all so helpful at the end of the day. You go back to school, the you know, after summer, and you're like, I learned this in Breakthrough. I am a step ahead of everyone. It's the best. I like Breakthrough because I've made so many friendships, you know, at first you you think oh i'm so scared i'm i'm going to a summer program and even though there's going to be people from my school there i feel like i'm not really going to make any friends but the staff like faith said they're all people our age or like in our age group so it's a lot easier to connect with, with them and for them to connect with us 6 to 1 ratio in classrooms all the teachers get to know us and our personalities and their lessons are actually kind of based on in, in my english class My teacher, she was the best. She, like, based her lesson plans on us and made sure we were all comfortable in what we were doing. I know one day she took us out to the garden and we did our lesson there just so everyone could be, you know, in a calm space. So really what you're experiencing is it's served up for your strengths and the way you learn as opposed to just here's the curriculum and you have to deal with it, whether it fits whatever your particular style of learning is. Yeah, that's more normal school, you know. In school, they just give you a sheet of paper. Okay, do this. And if you don't get it, well, that's too bad. I don't want to say that my teachers at school don't help at all because they do. But when you're in breakthrough, it feels like you could really speak up about what you don't understand. And you will get the help instead of being judged. I don't think we can say that any better. I think that was absolutely fabulous. Thank you. If somebody wants to get hold of the organization, what's the best way to connect with you guys? Breakthrough is accessible. First, I'd recommend going and taking a look at our website at BreakthroughSAC.org to learn more about us. To reach us, they can send an email to BSAC, B-S-A-C, at BreakthroughSAC.org, and we'll answer any questions and get back to them very quickly. That's that really is the best way, and we're, we're quite responsive. Just an amazing discussion. Jojo, you are an incredible student. I can't wait to see what you do through high school, through college. Oh. I hope I'm around when, <laughs> when you get out at the next level because I think you're just going to be amazing. Thank you so much. Faith, what, what a job you're doing. And I, I hope we can make that voice a little more amplified. Just with this program itself, where people maybe hear about Breakthrough Sacramento that maybe didn't, they're looking at something else and they see it in the queue or the catalog of of episodes and go, what is that? Because I think it's so imperative that we work to help the students who have the capability and the interest. Those are the ones we don't want to leave behind because they're going to make the changes in our in our world going forward. So thank you for what you do. Thanks for the the commitment and th- congratulations on 30 years. 30 years. Yes, it is a, a wonderful accomplishment. I appreciate people like you who give us the opportunity to shout 
out to the community and say, we're here, let us help. And Jojo, I want to hold you up and then just shake you from the top and say, look, this is what happens when it gets done the best we can do in matching, you know, the student with the teacher. So thank you both for being here. Thank Thank you. you. Once again, we're grateful to the businesses who have made this program possible. Cap Trust, fiduciary advice for endowments and foundations. You can find them in Sacramento, Roseville, and Folsom or at captrust.com. Runyon Saltzman Incorporated, RSE, marketing, advertising, and public relations, creating integrated communications committed to improving lives. You can find them at rs-e.com. And Western Health Advantage, a full-service health care plan for individuals, employer groups, and families. Westernhealth.com. Thank you for listening to the Nonprofit Podcast Series. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If what you heard moved you, please reach out to that organization and do what you can to help. If you like and appreciate what we're doing to support local nonprofits, please give us a positive review, subscribe, and share. If you're a nonprofit with an interest in participating in an episode, you can reach us at info at multipointstrategies.com. The Nonprofit Podcast Network is a production of Multipoint Content Strategies and is recorded and edited by Hear Me Now Studio.